Hey guys. So you know yesterday Phil brought this car up to me and drove away in that pickup truck and it's kind of getting dark and a little bit rainy yesterday so I didn't have much time to look at this but I got under it and looked a little bit at it and just inspected it just to kind of see what kind of shape this thing's in after him having it for two and a half years. So I thought we would look at that together. I've got to go out of town again this week for work about all week and so I'm going to do this video and put it up for you and all that so uh, just to give you a quick background on this car I've had this car since 2013 it was a Pennsylvania car and so it has a lot of the Pennsylvania salt belt type problems with it it's got rust in the quarters and a little bit in the rockers and in the wheel wells and stuff like that so uh, that's that it's got a little bit in the trunk so it's got some rust issues and they've, I, I didn't correct them I just kind of patched over them about three years ago and all that and because I wasn't sure I was gonna even gonna keep this car then as it turned out I gave it to Phil but uh, did that and so that was the last I saw it when he drove away in it he's put 11,000 miles on it and we'll just look it over and you can pass your own judgment about whether you think you took care of it or not the agreement was he was to take care of this car and to drive it and use it and all that and I don't think he did but we'll see um, I've decided initially my idea was I was going to part this car out and use the parts for something else as I said but I've changed my mind on that I think this car is actually worth saving because I got looking around for, you know, my idea was I'd take these parts and build a two-door, but she, you can't even find a two-door around here anymore. So I went looking on Craigslist for a car that needed a motor and stuff, and there's not any. Not in my price range. I mean, I'm not about to give 2000 or $2,500 for a body and then have to fix it and all that. So I think this car, even in its own condition, with a little bit of improvement, will be still a good investment because it's actually you know it's a pretty solid car from the midpoint up you know the doors are good glass all good interiors very nice except for the dash pad and you know fenders need a little bit of reworking needs a bumper if anybody knows where a 73 bumper is please let me know but it runs okay and uh, you know it does what it's supposed to do, it's drivable, so I'm going to hang on to it at least for a while. But in the meantime, I thought we'd just go ahead and look at this and just kind of see what we got left. So, the first thing I noticed when I came in here is that we got a split seam right here. And this upholstery has been reworked on this car. I was pretty sure of that, and now I'm completely sure of it because the uh this velour stuff that was not factory this was supposed to have like a ribbed vinyl it was my grandparents car my grandparents i've told the story more than once but my grandparents had a twin of this car except it was bronze with a black interior so anyway first thing i noticed was that and then i was looking around you know the floor is dirty dirt and dust and stuff all over the floor he's not cleaning the floor out at all these mats are hard to find in good condition. Come on out of here. Out, 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 out. Buzz is getting in my place here, huh? But that's that, but it's still okay. Still in one piece. And all this uh, is still looking okay. For some reason, the needle on the fuel gauge is bent. Outward. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and this dash pad, this thing just, man, it went downhill quick. I don't know. They, sometime in 74, they changed the formulation on these pads. And the 74s on that seemed like they last a lot better than these do. But this one, this one had initially just had a little chunk out of it, but now it's really gotten bad. So I have a cover for that. I see he did put. <sighs> I don't know what he did there actually. He's done something with those wipers. He put those metal ones back on it. He had some plastic ones on it because he's too cheap to buy refills for these. But he has done something. He has stuck 
some refills out of something else that are the wrong length on here. Feel. But uh, that's that headliner still looks good in it. It's rare to see that because these headliners tend to come apart. Something's missing here. I thought I had a clip up here for this. Well, maybe I never did, but for some reason, the lady that had this car originally, she took down the two clips here. There's supposed to be a clip here and uh, one right there to hold this belt up. And I had to buy this belt. And both, the, both the clips and the belts were gone. I don't know. Maybe the guy that I bought it from did that. So... But anyway, the interior is still presentable. He did, except for it being dusty and dirty on the floor. It's okay. There's some junk in here. Receipts. There's a fuse that doesn't fit this car. At least it left the lighter still in it. Somebody's used it. No fool in there. The radio always said quit, or the speaker quit, one or the other. It's got a AA medallion or something. Recovery. Somebody's been drinking. Now you notice this oil change thing here. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but if you can or not, it says 57,597, which is 157,000. That's when the oil was supposed to be changed. So it got an oil change at 54,597. So the mileage now is 61,493. So it's went almost 7,000 miles without an oil change. And I noticed when I started yesterday, the oil lights stayed on for about five seconds before it ever went out again. So, went out here and looked, checked the oil. about half a quart down but that oil is black as tar it's actually not it's a quart down and he says it's been using a lot of oil and I noticed at the bottom of the engine over on this right side is all oily again and he's all fanatical about that how did that get up there He's all fanatical about that. He just can't stand, no matter what else is wrong with the car, he can't stand any oil leaking, so. Anyway, but it looks like maybe the oil pump or something's been leaking, but that's just what they do. These things do that. But So he's not changed the oil in 7,000 miles because it's using oil, and that's what rednecks do. You know, some of them, even if they don't use oil, they won't change the oil in them. They just don't grasp that concept of changing oil in an engine. So anyway, he's done that to it, and so that's not good on these anyway. These things are a little bit weak as far as the bearings go, but it still sounds okay. And we had to put this thing on it, this overflow, which I'm about to take off of it because, um, where's that hose going there? Oh, I guess it's just a spit out hose, I guess, down there. Anyway, I'm about to take that off and just put the pose back on it because that's that was all because of him. He's convinced this thing was spitting. The reason why that it was losing coolant, he thought, was because it's spitting it out. And what it is is because it's filling it up too far. And these, you got to leave an air gap in here. Normally, they don't spit out like that. He didn't understand that. So, whatever. But anyway, that's that. So I fixed the carburetor for him. A while back so it's working okay but uh, I noticed it's still rusty up here we patched it or I patched it but these uh, fender aprons are gonna need some work on them for, for sure so that's like that this one over here is getting really weak back here where the thing bolts on to it because I can actually kind of move that a little bit that's not good and of course we know about the wiring the wiring is kind of out here but it's nothing that's not fixable you know all that's fixable uh, when he was pulling up in it I thought I heard an exhaust leak and sure enough I got in here and looked 
and the muffler's got a hole in it up there so it's rotten away of course he did not fix that it's got a hole back there also so it's gonna need a muffler put on it and the worst part of it is we're working our way back to the worst of this this is where i fixed this car and i i don't actually mean that seriously this is where i patched this car with bondo and it is coming back through again which i fully expected it to it's pretty solid to about right here and then it's just nothing but mud right here this whole corner is just mud so you can see back in here any of you guys from up north you recognize that i showed you that quite a while back but it's all blown out again so the wheel wells are blowing out and i don't know what that's I don't know if that's a seatbelt mount or what that is. I don't think so, but it's something on both sides right there. I'm going to have to look at that from the inside to know what that's about. But I just kind of patched that up, and that didn't even do anything. That came right apart again. And then back here, the this is all mud. whole thing is mud down here. Whole, this is mud. Same on both sides. So that's blowing out the... Uh, Come on, Buzz. Buzz is giving me some attitude out here today. We're going to have to talk with him. Anyway, this thing is blown out here behind the wheel, and that's just from salt spray. We patched it with some patching stuff. <laughs> but, uh, so this is all this is all mud, and it's kind of coming apart and stuff, which that's not surprising. And it's kind of doing the same thing on both sides. The doors on this thing are surprisingly good. They're as solid as a rock, no rust on them at all. And the trunk's not that bad. The trunk's, you know, the seams are coming apart in it, but <sighs> over here, same deal. Wheel wells are blowing out up there. Pretty bad. It looks like some kind of a line in there. I wonder if it's a fuel line or Yep, that's the that's the fuel lines right there. That's gonna make things interesting and fix that. But... This is a unibody car, by the way, if you're curious. But this is all mud right here, every bit of it. And I sculpted this out of stuff. You can see it's all kind of out. The whole thing back here is just terrible. So, But the rockers are, they're okay. Uh, that one up front, I think, has got some issues right up near the wheel up there. So... Suffice to say, it's going to need some sheet metal repair for sure. And floors, it's going to have to have floors in it and stuff at the front, maybe even in the back too. So that is what it is. You know, we know that, and that's there. And let's look at these tires, how old they are there. Kind of get... But I want to show you back here what the absolute worst is. And I knew about this and I've been on the fill about it and of course he didn't do anything about it to fix it or make it better but this stuff is not critical this is just sheet metal but this back here is critical it has gotten to the critical point now so right back here is where the problem lies this is our rear frame rail and I'm trying not to shine too much light on it there, maybe, but sit me gaping hole right there. That's not good because you got. Uh, well, let me go back around the other side too. Just looking at something back there too. I was looking at that, but I've already been picking at it with my hand, and I picked a whole bunch of rust off of it. It fell out. So here's another view. So I don't even need Musty's hammer to peck on that to know that's blown out badly. And the problem is, where the problem lies, is that this is where the rear leaf spring hanger bolts on to this guy right there. So that's getting exceedingly weak and it's got a 
frame is rotting right up through there. It's right, probably probably going to turn out to be about to right there. It's got bad problems. So that's that side, and then this back here with the bumper box on is not very good either. So it's going away. So that's critical. That's what I consider critical. That something can have to be fixed right away. This one over here. Don't worry too much, baby. But anyway, and it's going away over here too, just the same way. Maybe not quite as bad, but it's getting there. This, this, the the front, the spring mount's better on this side than it is on that one. But the frame is going away. And you look what those morons did. The bracket here broke away from the frame rail because it rusted out and they ran a piece of coat hanger around the hole in the frame to hold the tailpipe up. <laughs> and so, anyway, last thing I wanna show you is the trunk, and this is kinda of gonna illustrate that, you know, some of y'all may think that I'm hard on Phil, but the thing about Phil is I've learned that a lot of his stuff is redneck BS, drama, and so, the thing about it is, it turns out, like I said, he didn't take very good care of this car. So there's a sniffling and a long look, long look goodbye and all that crap notwithstanding. I know Phil, and, you know, for whatever he says about, I'm such a great friend, and he takes care of stuff, and he's just so glad to have things and all that. Well, here's the trunk. Here's the way he left the trunk. I have not even touched anything in here. So you can see he left a couple empty bottles, the hubcaps that go on it, which somebody sprayed some paint on one of them. The jack laying out here, the other part of the jack laying out here. It's dirty, just junk laying in it. So that's what he thought of this thing. So that's why I don't feel bad about that. He can stand out here and sniffle and <laughs> all he wants to, you know. But you know he didn't keep his he didn't keep his agreement up with this thing so i wanted to get it back away from him and at least save what i got because you know it's if if something were to happen to him too that thing would have been gone and somebody would have got this car and sold it within the day because they don't care about phil up there they're just they're just sponges they're just redneck leeches up there where he lives and all they want from him is some money support and whatever else and they wouldn't do nothing for him. They'd sell every bit of his crap he's got up there if he passed away. Guarantee you'd all be gone. That's what they think of them, they're bums. So anyway, Phil is a good guy. He's my friend, he always will be, but you know, this is what he did to the car. So this is why that you all, some of y'all can get on to me and say I'm mean to him sometimes, but I'm not. I know Phil, and I know how he really works. He's a little bit more devious than he comes across. A little bit lazier. So anyway, I've got other things ahead of me here. I'm gonna finish up the videos about the HEI and the fuel system issues on that white car. And then we're gonna get into that. But in the meantime, I'm probably just gonna do a few maintenance things on this car, like change the oil and stuff and all that. And we're just gonna drive it around for a while and then when things get where they're ready to uh, enable me to weld on this. I'm going to immerse myself in the master's teachings about welding rusty frames and see what I can do with this. So until then, thanks for watching and let's give this old car a big welcome back home again. <laughs>